I designed this loom that could be controlled from a phone. But I knew that a design with a bajillion parts like this was was almost certainly going to fail. But I went for it anyway, and now I've spent more than a year designing and building the thing, and I still don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> How do I do this to myself? I don't know, but I can't wait to see if it actually works. It all started when I gave my son this loom for Christmas. He threaded it up immediately and wove his first scarf on Christmas Day. That got me thinking that it would be pretty fun to have a loom that could weave arbitrary patterns. Weaving uses two sets of threads that pass over and under each other at right angles to form fabric. By using different colored threads and different patterns of passing over and under, an amazing variety of fabrics and designs can be produced. From a simple pot holder to a fancy silk tie, you're probably wearing woven fabric right now. Hey, don't judge! So I got to work and started building a long sequence of prototypes. I used 3D printed parts for the weaving mechanism and laser cut plywood for the body of the loom, designing my way around issue after issue. That's the fun part of any project. Man, how do people even use computers in movies? This is terrible. Let's take the back off the loom to get a better look at what's going on. At the very heart of the design are these discs with square holes in them. The discs are stacked on this square shaft which locks them into position. I guess it's more of a spine than a heart. One section of the shaft can be rotated 180 degrees and the whole shaft slides back and forth positioning the driver inside each of the discs in turn. That way you can put any pattern on your spine. Do, 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 do. We put a follower around each of the discs. Instead of raising and lowering the threads directly, these followers move these hooks left and right. This causes the hooks to engage or disengage with the lifter bars. The bottoms of these hooks are connected by a teeter-totter. By raising and lowering the bars, the loom pulls various threads up and other threads down using these wires, called heddle wires, which have an eye that each of the threads passes through. Four bars are operated in pairs so that both the current pattern and the inverse of the current pattern can be applied to the threads without having to do a funky disc dance. <laughs> funky disc dance, funky, funky disc dance. What? <laughs> Remind me to never do that again. So let's assemble 14 of these sections and take the loom for a test weave. Now with only 14 warp threads, this wasn't going to be a very complicated pattern. Once I figured out the right packing tension, the weaving went fairly smoothly. Now, if this were a headband weaving machine, it would be mission accomplished, but I'd like to do more complex patterns than this, so let's try adding some more layers. As I wove, I started to realize that textile design was a lot more than just drawing cute bitmaps of pandas. Long, horizontal, or vertical runs could turn a bamboo forest into yarn soup. Thankfully, weavers have been dealing with this for centuries. And with a few of their tricks, I managed to design a much more stable panda. Let's try assembling 60 sections and see how that goes. There are seven parts per section and 60 sections, so I have my work cut out for me. Thankfully, you get a lot faster at this with some practice. Filming this was really heart-wrenching. I never want to do that again. It was at this point in the project that my HR Geiger counter started going off. I'm sure it's safe. Mostly. My streak of good luck seemed to have run out. The hooks were rubbing together and I had to reprint 120 of them. I had a lot of board failures trying to get down to it using just a single power supply. And worst of all, at 60 threads, the loom was jamming. It was time for some redesign. The loom needed a better control system than this massive wires and a circuit board left over from a previous project.
I designed an enclosure that had a cam position indicator, arrow buttons, and some blinky LEDs. I also added some vent holes and even mounted a carriage homing switch. Finally, it was time to reassemble the loom and try and weave with it at 60 threads. Hopefully this time it wouldn't jam up or burn itself out when I turned it on. I can't believe it, it actually worked. When I started this thing, I told my friends, there is no way something this complicated is ever gonna go. So it's kind of a pleasant surprise to have gotten some weaving out of it. I can't wait to try a few other things. If you wanna read more about this, you can go over to retrotechjournal.com, which is my blog, and I'm open sourcing all the code and the designs, so feel free to poke around through that stuff. If you like videos like this, feel free to subscribe or subscribe or whatever, but, uh, and like, like the video, but um, honestly, I build things. I only sometimes video things, so it's only gonna be a tiny trickle of content. So if that's your thing, please hop aboard. <laughs> See you guys later.